Hi, I'm Julie Pizzetti, Senior Research Fellow at Oxford University's Institute for the Study of Journalism. I've been a journalist for nearly 30 years and I'm also a UNESCO commissioned researcher and author on the safety of women journalists in the digital age. I'll be guiding you through this module on sexism, harassment and abuse, offline and online, covering issues of discrimination and violence against women journalists. So let's start with the big picture. Violence against women is one of the most serious issues which all women, not only women journalists, have to deal with in our society. It's a violation of our human rights and it can affect our well-being, our working conditions and our participation in society. It's also an issue too often inappropriately reported on by the news media. However, there are particular threats to the human rights of freedom of expression and access to information when women journalists are silenced through the chilling effects of harassment, abuse and violence on and offline. These include impacts on representation of women in the media and women's active participation in the media as journalists, as sources and commentators, as well as just engaged audience members. Women journalists face disproportionate risk and experience of violence and intimidation for the work they do in both the physical and digital realms. They're affected as members of a profession that is increasingly becoming a target in conflicts in the context of terrorism and as a feature of the rising global tide of populist politics. They're vilified and attacked for the messages they share and the questions they ask. And in some cases, they're even targeted for daring to speak at all. In addition to the risks and threats experienced by their male counterparts, they're also exposed to gender-based harassment and violence in the field and in the newsroom. Such attacks can be physical or virtual in nature, and they're frequently sexualised. In this module, we'll examine both the lingering impacts of violence and sexual harassment directed at women journalists in the physical world, from newsrooms to battlefields, and the emerging scourge of gendered online abuse targeting female reporters globally. These problems and their convergent power to further suppress women's agency and voices have attracted the special attention of the UN, as well as professional associations, trade unions and NGOs invested in the defence of freedom of expression. At a more general level, media reporting on violence against women requires care and professionalism and empathy. Too many news reports cover the issue from a sensationalist point of view adding too much in the way of graphic details or questioning the clothing of victims or downplaying the attack itself. We suggest that journalists and editors must think more carefully about how they use words and images when reporting on violence against women, both women media professionals and women as citizens. The language used, the captions below the photos, the headlines, the way victims and survivors are interviewed, all of these things help to frame stories and can have a negative impact on audiences as well in terms of genuine understanding and appropriate social policy responses. In this unit we discuss all of these issues and address a range of strategies which have been developed both by individuals and organisations, from the UN to the newsroom floor to combat and challenge sexist behaviour, along with physical threats and online abuse. It's, you know, I, I was a war zone correspondent, a conflict reporter, and, and what I've lived through online in the last year and a half, and what Rappler has lived through, is unlike anything I've ever gone through in conflict. Number one, it comes at you so fast. It's exponential. It's a million times a minute in, in some instances. I mean, at one point I counted um, how many hate messages I received in an hour and it was averaging at 90 hate messages an hour and that lasted for a month. You know, and this was the first time that had happened and so I didn't have anything to look back on. I didn't know whether it was real. At the beginning I actually tried to respond and to rationally have an, uh, a, a debate. It wasn't debating, it was just meant to batter you. So the first is, you know, to intimidate you to silence, to batter you to silence. And then once we began to collect data, I realized that, oh, good God, you know, this isn't going to work. And then we told the story. And the minute we told the story, that was when the government came after us even more. <laughs> 